When he arrived here, he was only a young boy with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, culture and progress. But Kocha was to give him a lot more. In the midst of the workers, communists, he was nurtured with the ideas of scientific communism. The time was to come when he would be the teacher of the workers, because first and foremost, he knew how to be their pupil. In July 1936, he met the outstanding communist militant Ali Kilmendi. Those were the days when the reactionary king had placed two alternatives before these distinguished communists. Either to leave Albania or to be thrown into prison. It was precisely during those days in Shkodra, over the remains of Cercisi and Mucho Chuli, and in Girokastra, over the grave of Biotopoli, that Anva Hoxha was to take the oath. Manhood, which is rising to its feet, pledges over this grave that, when the time comes, it will never lack willpower or courage to prepare a happy Albania, a prosperous Albania. Word gets back from Yanina to the oak at Mashkulora that the band had to be wiped out and the heroic village of Mashkulora raised to the ground. And here at Mashkulora, Cherchi spoke and gave the order. Melazim, get your troops to withdraw. If not, your blood will pour. Cherchi's Topoli is what I'm called. On the one hand, the Zog regime violently suppressed everything progressive and democratic. On the other hand, it paved the way to the penetration of the fascist policy of Italy into Albania. The country was being threatened by an even greater danger. The 20th century was under the threat of medieval times. days of April were approaching. Even though the traitor king had promised that in the case of an attack he would fight, when the sea and the sky were blotted with warships and aircraft, he took to his heels without giving a thought to the plight of Albania. Together with the communists, and Vahodja was in the front ranks of the demonstrations which erupted in Kocha and throughout the whole country on the eve of the invasion. As always, tiny Albania welcomed the invaders with a rifle. generals of the black shirt army who survived were to return to our mountains only this time to unearth and collect the remains of their hordes. Confrontations with the occupiers followed, one after the other. And the Hoja refuses to sign the notices book of the Lyceum, in which the staff is instructed to survey the students to prevent them from getting involved in political activity.
Three days later, on December 12th, 1939, he is given the sack. From that moment, he devotes himself entirely to the struggle and the revolution. The time demanded commissars. The communist groups were faced with duties of the utmost importance. From here, Envahoja with other comrades of the group set out for other parts of the country to create ties with the communists, workers, peasants and honest patriots who felt for the cause of homeland and freedom. In the front ranks of the demonstrations and all the efforts stood the communists. They were the organizers and leaders of the 28th of October 1941 demonstration in Tirana. It was in these days that Comrade Envahoja commenced the life of one outlawed, the life of a professional revolutionary. It is in the comprehension and the correct solution of the major duty of founding the party that the greatest merit of Comrade Envahoja and other comrades lies in those difficult times of occupation and boundless hopes. just around the corner. Comrades, today, November the 8th, 1941, the representatives of the three communist groups of Kocha, Shkodra and of the group of the young, assembled in the plenary session and following constructive discussions in a communist spirit, basing themselves in the mandate which the comrades of their groups gave them, they founded the Communist Party of Albania. Those in favor, raise your hands. Forty years ago, our people entrusted the Albanian communists with their fate and the future of the homeland. Our party has justified this trust with its glorious work, with the triumph of the revolution and the creation of a new socialist Albania. Earlier, again in Paris, Anva Hoja, the student, walked this street. Left without a bursary by the Zog regime, he was compelled to interrupt studies at Montpellier. Here he had voluntarily attended the lectures at the Faculty of Justice. He frequented worker environments of Paris, the clubs of Marxist education of the Communist Party of France, delved into the teaching of the French Revolution, became more deeply acquainted with the all-famous Paris Commune. The minister of New Albania entered the palace of Luxembourg to take part in the first peace conference. He solemnly stated that no one will dare lay a finger on our borders. The whole world must know that the Albanian people do not permit anyone to discuss their borders and their territory. Major 
danger hung over Albania. It was extremely difficult to distinguish and create a concise idea about it. This was the danger of the Yugoslav chauvinists, an old danger for Albania, but which was now borne by the leadership of the Yugoslav Communist Party itself, with Tito at the head. The sound leadership of the Albanian Communist Party with Comrade Enver Hoxha at the head was becoming more and more convinced that behind the smiles and the pomp of the friends lurked sinister anti-Albanian and anti-Marxist aims. Later on, the whole world was to learn what kind of a communist Tito was. The high-flown promises, accompanied by long lines of zeros on paper, the manipulation of a double dealer with the economic convention, the flagrant plunder, intrigues, espionage, activity of the Yugoslav envoys, made the leadership of the Albanian Communist Party reflect deeply. accusations, the friction and the quarrels with the Yugoslav envoys during the years of the war intensified on the eve of the liberation and openly erupted at the time of the Berati plot. Precisely when the clash with the Yugoslav leadership was becoming more and more acute, when apart from everything else, Tito and company were doing their utmost. But let us retrace our steps to the gloomy days of March 1953. Today, here before Comrade Stalin, we swear that we shall always remain loyal to the great cause of Lenin and Stalin and raise our hearts aloft. And we will work with drive, forging ahead to score new victories. For us, Stalin has not died. He will never die. He lives and will continue to live through the centuries. Khrushchev's gang of traitors, with its anti-Marxist destructive viewpoint, was to cause enormous damage to the communist and workers' movement, the cause of socialism and the revolution in the world. to the other, pressure and blackmail were exerted against the leadership of the party, but now their seat was the Kremlin. In May 1955, the Party of Labour of Albania officially opposed the arbitrary decision of Khrushchev to rehabilitate the Titoite clique. Treachery brings traitors together. The 20th Congress was to christen the triumph of modern revisionism. Once again, profound reflecting. Entire days and nights at the head of the political bureau, at the seat of the Central Committee of the party, or in this room, with his comrades or in his own, Often through to the morning, the leader of the party kept a close watch on the development of events. He analyzed the situations which arose. By distorting Marxism-Leninism, modern revisionism directly threatened to the fate of socialism in Albania, the freedom and independence of the homeland. of great
grave problems and preoccupation that he felt the need more than ever to be by the side of his beloved. From these mountains that the war was led, the partisans had been poorly clad, hungry, unarmed. The Nazi encirclement seemed insurmountable. Those who were allegedly our friends and allies advised us to surrender. It's hopeless, said the English. You have lost the war. You are encircled. There are only two alternatives. Either get yourselves wiped out or surrender. But the party replied. What you dare to say is the culmination of treachery. We'll never surrender. We'll continue our struggle through to complete victory. Nothing will change this time too. No to Khrushchevite revisionism. War against the traitor of Marxism-Leninism. In very proper Mosca, ya per plus in a future, so did he give a again a shameful withdrawal of enemies. Glory had been ours, it remained and will always be ours. History was to sanction this courageous act of the party of labor of Albania in the constitution. Foreign bases do not defend but undermine the independence of the country. The enemies of the party in our people, the imperialists and the revisionists, regard us as a thorn in the flesh and hate us. They are infuriated when they see that within their rear areas, a tiny country and a heroic people are fighting with heroism and persistence to defend their freedom and independence and to build socialism successfully. party isolated, Joseph Vissarionovich Stalin invited and received in Moscow a top-level Albanian delegation with Comrade Anvar Hoxha at the head. Unforgettable meetings with the pupil and continuer of the work of Lenin were to be followed by meetings with another outstanding revolutionary, the hero of Leipzig, George Dimitrov. The warm and fraternal atmosphere which Joseph Vissarionovich Stalin and Dimitrov reserved, the representatives of the Albanian people and communists, the words, lessons and valuable advice which they gave constituted another confirmation of the line implemented by the Albanian Communist Party and an internationalist support for the future. ...him with them at work, strolling, at the bedside of a sick comrade, in family celebrations and joys, resting a little beside a spring.
mod USA og så igen. Stop hver en base, snus hver raket. Ja!